I really suspect that John Rahm will defend his title in the Masters. Not too many guys have done that. In this video, we'll give you 2024 Masters rankings, tiers, DFS plays, some gambling, and other things you need to know about the event. I'm Alan Toslowski of RotorWire.com, along with the expert, Len Hochberg. Len, let's start with the course. Everybody knows it's an it's Augusta, but is there anything weather-wise or different about the course this year that we need to know? Yeah, Alan, there is one slight change. I shouldn't say slight. It's a significant change on the second hole, a par five. They have moved it back, the tee box back 10 yards and to the left. It is now the longest hole on the course at 585 yards. And they moved it back to try and bring a fairway bunker on the right side more into play, playing the angles there. So it could have a significant effect early in the round on the second hole. Weather-wise, early indications are, I mean, this is Georgia in springtime. We could see rain at any point in any day. But right now, it doesn't look too terrible uh, with, with the conditions the way they are right now. All right, let's start with tier one from your article, which could be found in the video description below right here, where you flesh out, what, the top 100? How many how many players are you fleshing out there? There are 88 in this field. This is the smallest major. This is the least work I have to do for all of these, yeah. Starting at the top with your number one ranked player is Scotty Scheffler. What's his outlook for the tournament? He was in a, a bit of a funk for a while for the number one player in the world. He didn't win for close to a year, but recently he's won twice at Bay Hill and the players, and he has uh, found his putting stroke, or at least improved it. And, you know, and so he is the overwhelming favorite this week. And uh, and rightfully so. He won here in 2022. He was 10th here last year amid some of his putting problems. Um, he clearly is the guy to beat. John Robb, you have him at number two. How much of a gap is there between Scheffler and John Robb? You know, not very much at all. Not very much at all. Robb was the defending, you know, won last year, the defending champion. He's now with Live Golf. Indications are that he really, really is looking forward to this. I mean, they all are. But he really wants to get back and play with the other best players in the world. I think he's going to be really pumped and really primed to play well this week. He will be a force. Brooks Kepka is coming in number three, last year's runner-up. Is this a big three, or is he now a truly a little bit below these guys? Yeah, I, could, I think there's a strong argument to make it a big three. Kepka was right there with Rom last year in the final group. And let it get away, actually. He really could have won the tournament. He's, uh, I think he's been kicking himself for a whole year about that. And really, he has not won a Masters. He has five majors, but he doesn't have a Masters. I think he, uh, again, I use the word force with John Rahm. I, you know, I don't think it would surprise anybody if Brooks Kepka were there on Sunday. One of your favorites, Cameron Smith, has, you know, he's had a bunch of top five finishes at this event. Is he squarely inside your top 10 this year? He is squarely inside the top 10 toward the back of the top 10. Yeah, he had an off year at the Masters last year with somewhere in the 30s, but he has three top fives through the years. He was battling it out with Scotty Scheffler two years ago, lost that battle. Uh, I think he, just like Brooks Kepta, he is thinking about the one that got away and he can, he, is perfect for this golf course appears to be playing better on lib than he was last year coming into this tournament so he is definitely would not surprise me if he were there on sunday as well looking more at your contenders tier i want to talk about matt fitzpatrick who tied for 10th at last year's masters what's his outlook and do you give him a reasonable chance to surprise and win it all He's had a couple of good finishes here through the years. As you said, 10th last year, 14th the year before. He was 7th once before a few years back. Interestingly, he was not playing well this year, and they discovered a weight in his driver that he had forgotten was there. This weight is all of 4 grams, grams, but that's how significant these little things are to professional athletes. They took this 4-gram weight out of his driver before the Players' Championship he finished fifth. So if you're looking at Matt Fitzpatrick and looking at stats and recent form and things like that, you're not going to see very good results, except for last week or last time out at the players. So I think he has a real chance to be on the first page of the leaderboard come Sunday. 
Let's talk about a few of the players that are going the other direction, falling. I've seen Tony Finau recently slipped all the way to 30th in the world. What's his prospects for the 2024 Masters? Yeah, you're right. That Finau had fallen all the way to 30th in the world. He did have a very good finish last time out at Houston. He was runner-up. He was the defending champion, so he played that course well. Certainly a good sign, but his putting issues are real. He has played the Masters very well through the years. He even played it one year on a dislocated ankle. He famously dislocated his ankle during the par three contest the day before the tournament. Played all four days. We had a very good week. Is there anybody that you put a little star, a little flag next to that could break out and surprise in the Masters this year? He is Joaquin Neiman, who is now with Live Golf. He is in my top 10. He's a little, it's a little hard to gauge the live guys. They're not playing with the, uh, the regular players of, uh, I know people are going to hate me for that comment. The regular players on the PGA tour, but, um, he just won twice on live. The interesting thing about Joaquin Neiman, he's only 25 years old, but he's already played the Masters four times. He's gotten better every year. When he first played the Masters, missed the cut. Then he finished 40th. Then he finished 35th, and last year, he tied for 16th. That is what you like to see at guys at this course. They're just getting better, figuring out the nuances. He can really, really, uh, you know, make a dent in things and, and ruin a lot of people's uh, plans on, on Sunday. Who are any rookies or newcomers that we should all keep an eye on, even if they don't have a top 10, top 20 finish? Who's somebody that you're going to be looking at this year? Well, there are two guys who have not, you know, really world-class players who have not played the Masters before. Wyndham Clark is number four in the world. He's won the U.S. Open, but he started his big stretch of great play shortly after the Masters last year. This will be his first go-round. And Ludwig Olberg, also in the top ten in the world, um, he has never played in a major. He has uh, been on the Ryder Cup team. He's done a lot of things already in golf at only 25 years old, but he has never played in a major. So these two guys, I think a lot of people are going to be looking at them. But the one thing we know about Augusta is it is really hard to play well the first time or at least contend for a title. And I think that these guys will need a little bit more seasoning before we can really count on them to be, uh, you know, in the mix on Sunday. I want to talk about statistics, analytics, data, just a little bit in general. The Masters, uh, Augusta National Golf Club, they let you hit the ball off the tee. The fairways are pretty wide. They're not really narrow like a lot of weeks we see on the, on the tour. So they will let you get the ball out there. It is really, really difficult in on the greens and around the greens. There are runoffs. There are undulations on the greens. They're super fast. That stuff is will really determine who wins and who doesn't win the golf tournament. So look for guys who are really good around the green with their wedge play and especially on the greens. I think that, you know, we've seen some shorter hitters at this very long golf course succeed. Uh, Patrick Reed comes to mind. Uh, Jordan Spieth, not the longest hitter, has played well here. Really, really got to have your wedge game and your putter and then you can actually make a dent. Want to talk DFS strategies for a moment here for those playing in DraftKings and other DFS websites. What is a strategy they can deploy here to have a little bit of differentiation in their lineup? Is there someone that's a little bit cheap or a low-owned uh, high-end player? How do you recommend uh, people go about DFS for this Masters? You know, one of the things about all the majors, not just the Masters, is that all the best players are here. They all can't be high-priced. So we do see, I see, a lot of value lower down, some highly ranked players you know, not in the tens, not in the nines, maybe not even in the eights, in the seven thousands. Now it's the age old question: Do you want to, you know, go with the uh, the top guys, the Schefflers, the Roms, the Kepkas, and then you'll have to dip down probably into the six thousands to fill out your lineup? There are so many top players who aren't playing well. Uh, Scheffler and Rom are not two of them, and Kepka's not uh, not there either. But I think you can make an argument. For a more balanced lineup this year, sports betting wise, you know, you have outright winner, top five, and top ten. You know, Brooks Kepka started out at like twenty to one to win, which a lot of people, you know, alarms went off. I think a lot of people saw that and and just started to plunk money down on Brooks Kepka. Plus, uh, plus, plus eighteen hundred as time of recording. 
plus 400 as top five and plus 180 to top 10. You could probably get a pretty good number uh, or a decent number on Neiman to finish the top 10. Well, good lead in for our pizza bet. I want to bet a little and win a lot. So give me one of those names, uh, Len, where I can just put a little bit down, a little sprinkle and maybe get these unbelievable odds. Yeah, there are three guys who are at least in the 7,000s on DraftKings, and they, their odds will be comparable in, in the in the sports books. And Matt Fitzpatrick, who you mentioned earlier, he's in the 7,000s. Sahith Thagala, who is number 15 in the world, and he's yet he's in the 7,000s. Not 8s, not 9s, not 10s. Um, he finished ninth here last year as a rookie. Very hard to do, as I talked about. Very hard for first-timers. Well, why can Tagala succeed? He is great around the greens. He's one of the best putters in the world. He sprays his driver off the tee. That will be forgiven a little bit this week. And Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed is one of the, maybe the most hated guy in golf. And I imagine a lot of people don't like to bet people they don't like and don't want to root for. But of course, that's not the greatest strategy when we're playing with real money. Patrick Reed has finished in the top 10 here three years in a row. He was fourth last year, even after leaving for Liv, and a lot of people wondering, well, he's not playing in top competition. He's not going to be really in form and everything, but he was. He's like 80 to one. Full prediction time, Len Hochberg. Who's going to win the 2024 Masters? I think it's going to come down to between Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm on Sunday. And unfortunately, I think that Scheffler's putter will betray him. He's putted much better since he switched to the mallet head. But I think they, in crunch time, maybe not make the big time putt. And John Rahm has been itching and aching to get back to the PGA Tour. At least the, the vibe of playing in big fields, in big events, with big crowds. I think he is just, this is on his calendar for, for months now. I really suspect that John Rahm will defend his title in the Masters. Not too many guys have done that. If you enjoy videos like this, consider hitting the like and subscribe button and leave a comment. Let us know who you believe is going to win the 2024 Masters.